Citizens, it is I, your shard, collector guy, transparent eye. What the hell's going on? Back on my shit again, ready for some action, ready to show some bullshit to you guys. I kind of was going to do something else, but then I seen this uh, video thread going around. Chris Proffy, I believe, started that up. So cheers to him. And it's all about the letter O, and I was like, Holy shit, I know that letter. Like, out of all the letters, he picked one that I knew. And I was like, I, 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 I'm I, a guy who knows about O's. Oh, you know, so. <laughs> so, I decided I'll do that shit, too. Because, look it, there's so many good O bands. That's the whole thing. It's like, what? Well, it's October. O is for October. Well, what bands is O for? Well, we're about to find out. I grabbed me a stack of fucking LPs and a stack of singles, and then I was like, this is too fucking many. So then I put some back, and now I'm going to show you the ones I didn't put back. So let's start with the big babies. 12 inches of terror. Look at this fucker. Man, obituary. Slowly we rot. What a fucking killer. Boom. Ba -ba -ba boom. This fucking corner got a little bit beat up, which is sad, but this is a hard pressing to find, and I'm just fine with it. This is like the uh, original RC pressing, 1989-ish, I think. Fucking obituary. Probably, no, definitely one of my top death metal bands. I'm not a huge death metal guy, but... I do like me some death metal when it's that real good shit. When it's the kind of shit that I like, then I like it. <laughs> anyway, what's good about Obituary for me is, like, uh, dude's got a fucking cool-ass voice. A lot of the death metal that wears on me is when it's, like, very monotone, the low growling, but this guy's all over, like, wow, yeah. you know, he's fucking pretty expressive and brutal. In his vocal stylings. And I for one enjoy it. Number two. This band starts with O also. What about this? Oi Poloi. Man, Oi Poloi is good. Oi Poloi has a ton of records out too. This one's from like 99-ish, 98-ish. I remember my first tour I ever did with a band... 1998 we graduated high school and like the next day left for a tour and somewhere in fucking Ohio we ran into Oi Poloi who was also touring and they were fucking super awesome live and super nice dudes and this came out I think right after that they gave us an awesome free tape that day but anyway this is like fucking English punk rock Kind of in a hardcore mixed with UK 82 vein. You know, they started in the mid 80s. They go way back. Look at this sick cover art, too. I love that bullshit. That's cool. This is on Scold releases, by the way. But anyway, it's kind of like uh, some fist pumping fucking back alley shout along chorus fucking pretty brutal stuff. They're very, uh, very into protecting Mother Earth and. Uh, taking back fucking shit that's been stole from the people like Stonehenge and shit great band great record up next Omen Omen they were kind enough to make their O out of a spooky scary snake <laughs> look at this album cover fucking rules man this is like one of them probably got in trouble in high school for, like, drawing this instead of taking notes in history class or something. It's pretty radical. Long-haired skeleton guys just murdering other guys. And for some reason, a large amount of the people that 
the skeletons killed are naked people. I don't know why the long-haired skeletons were fighting a nudist colony, but I'm going to assume that they had good reason. This record is pretty sweet. I got to tell you, Roadrunner, 1984. This is filed into your uh, regular-ass, adjectiveless heavy metal album, 80s fucking metal, um, which I am also picky on. Just like death metal, it kind of is going to depend on the vocalist for me. Um, and that guy is a fucking cool vocalist. I just want to know he's fucking really means it. And he does. Up next, One Bad Pig. One Bad Pig, a Christian band. B -b 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 band, B-A-N-N-E-D. These poor fellas. I don't know that these guys get brought up too much around these parts. Unless you're Scott Waters or me. But check this one out. One Bad Pig was like probably the first punk rock band I ever heard back in the late 80s. I mean, at least the first time someone was like, this is punk rock as opposed to some other kind of rock. You know, I probably had heard through the radio some shit before that, but this was the first time I heard that terminology for some kind of music. And it's a funny band to start with for that. Look at this pig. is pretty good drawing. Anyway, this is uh, 1986, I think. Porky's Demise Records. That's their own label. Um, my parents were, like, super strict when I was a kid. So, like, any... Any kind of music that was not Christian music, we had to, like, hide, man. But we could get whatever if it had the right label for them. They had MTV blocked, and, like, we... It was, like, a thing with them. But so anyway, as a result, I got into all these... these this funny world of Christian music for, uh... Till I was old enough to just do whatever the hell I wanted. Because this is when I was still pretty little, man. But... I like this record. It's weird. I mean, it's it's punkish, but it's also um, hard hard rockish metalish at times too. It's like a pretty unique take on punk rock. It's it's a weird record, but I like it. One bad pick. Moving on to the only ones, the only ones. This is their first record. And it's a good one, man. CBS Records, what is this? Let's see if it has a year for us. 1978. So, you know, this was in the midst of the punk rock thing going on in England. And these guys fit in with that a little bit, but also were kind of on their own trip. This guy, uh, Peter Parrott, how do you say his name? I don't know, something like that. Uh, he was the singer, guitar player guy. I know he got down with Johnny Thunders. They did some stuff together. This dude over here, man, he was from like Spooky Tooth or something, you know? So these guys were on like a little bit different trip. A little bit more musical, kind of like a downer, melodic heroin vibe going on. Another Girl, Another Planet's their main jam off of that sucker. And it's a killer. Next, back to some some dark ass evil shit. Onslaught, power from hell. Man, look at these suckers. Death metal. Doesn't sound like death metal as we know it today, though. Not at all. So this is like '86 or something. This is like a uh, combat reissue. I gotta get the pus head, pus mort uh, pressing the original press one of these days. But this will do for now. This is, I think, an 87 press of, like, an 85 release. Something like that. Camouflage combat label. But this shit is metal. I mean, to me, this is more of a crossover album, but not, like, DRI accused crossover. It's, like, crossing into, like, Venom, Bathory, that kind of metal territory, you know, and crossing from Broken Bones Discharge territory, you know, so... 
it's a, it's a different kind of crossover, but to me, you can definitely hear that punk shit in it just as much as you can hear the metal. And it's pretty, it's pretty brutal. A little bit of thermonuclear devastation coming for you. Man, here's one. Operation Ivy. That also starts with O. This band is pretty well known at this point. I mean, I think for people in my age group anyway, it's kind of a big record. Um, obviously, guys from here went on to do Rancid, um, as well as a bunch of other bands like Big Rig and Common Rider and shit. This is Lookout Records pressing. Um, how you know with Lookout Records, if it's an earlier or later pressing, is this if the address for Lookout is in Laytonville, it's like an earlier press. If it's a Berkeley address, it's a repress. Unless it's a later release when they were in Berkeley anyway, right? Wow, look at the reflection of me in the record. I'm on the record. It's autumn. Fucking lighting and reflections and... I'm still getting used to this whole camera talking to a fucking camera thing and the reverse mirror shit. I'm getting used to it. Anyway, this is like fucking punk rock mixed with ska. It's California fucking, and I mean, to me, I'm not a huge ska dude. But this is probably one of the best uh, mixtures of those two things. And it still comes off as super fucking punk rock, you know, not like fucking... The wimpy, happy ska that was on the radio in the 90s, you know? It's like, it's still pretty desperate and uh, pretty gnarly, I think. Moving along. Man, look at these babes. Oral. The band is named Oral. The album is named Oral Sex. Is that true? No, the album's just named Sex. The album Sex by the band Oral. Check it out. Total 80s babes in leather with whips and studs and shit. This is like... This is kind of like a shittier girl school with totally X-rated lyrics. Look at it. There's a song called Love Pole, Pearl Necklace, Head. They cover black leather, which was like... A, Steve Jones from the Pistols made that. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you should already know right now if you're into this or not. Conquest Records. I don't see a date. It's probably like 86-ish, mid-80s. Oral. <laughs> they named their band Oral. That's hilarious. Anyway. Oh. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff right there. Ah, uh, keep going. Overkill. That starts with an O also. Overkill plays thrash metal, right? You probably all already know about Overkill. This is probably my favorite Overkill album. It's pretty good. Even though... <laughs> the first, I remember the first time I heard the tune Elimination off here, and he's like... Elimination. E! I'm like, seriously, that was your idea to scream E like that? Because it sounds ridiculous. And it still makes me laugh every time I hear it. But, it's a killer thrash record anyway. I've grown to enjoy it. <laughs> Even if it sounded completely ridiculous at first. For me, one of the best albums of the 90s for punk rock shit, says, fuck the 90s, right, on the front of it. And when I say punk rock shit, I mean, like, straight up, regular-ass punk rock. I mean, the 90s had a lot of fucking offshoots of punk rock and crusts and fucking street punk and pop punk and all sorts of shit. To me, this is, like, just a, a great punk rock album. Definitely coming more from the UK 82 side of things. This is pretty damn good. Helen of Oi. Yeah, yeah. No date. Trust me, it's from the 90s. I don't remember. Maybe I, I would say sometime 
Maybe 96, 95, I don't know, something in there. It's fucking great sing-along, fuck you, punk rock, man. They, they wrote really good songs for that. Um, they were listening to a lot of, of one-way system, a lot of blitz, that kind of shit. And uh, one more LP. You gotta, you gotta pull a little bit of Ozzy. Because Ozzy Osbourne is a double O, so that should be double points. Ay yeah yeah yeah. Probably not my favorite Ozzy record, but one of the harder to find ones. I grabbed this uh, very cheaply from uh, this live stream that sells shit that is like very punk oriented. So whenever a more metal record comes on, a lot of times. You'll get a way better price than on Discogs or elsewhere, because this shit's expensive. But, you know, Ozzy Osbourne, this has a bunch of fucking radio hits. Man, Mama, I'm Coming Home, No More Tears, etc. But also some jams he co-wrote with Lemmy and shit. I can get down with this, this Ozzy record as well. How about we move on to smaller records? But sticking with the letter O, because this is all about O. It's all about O. Take a fucking break. Have a sip of a fucking little bit of lager. A lager and a lager. Put it in your O-hole. And let's move on. Singles. The fucking offenders, man. Get down with the offenders. I hate myself and bad times. Damn, bro. So this this guy was going through some shit here. Look at this. Rabid Records out of Austin, Texas. I really dig this fucking record. Man, this is 1984 American hardcore punk rock. Fucking... Put I Hate Myself by The Offenders on and fucking see if it doesn't kick you in the fucking face. It's super fast. The guy's like super fucking pissed and depressed. It's a really good song. Omega Tribe. Angry Songs. This is from 1982 on Crass Records. This is like some, some UK punk shit. This band was odd, though. You know, they were, like, uh, definitely trying to go in a million directions. I feel like, you know, the, it, it starts off, the first ten seconds of the record are, like, mm, this nice poster. Are super angry, like, ten seconds, you're like, all right, I'm about to get my ass kicked by some, like, top-notch UK82 punk rock stuff, well, like, fast, you know? And then, like, it just, like, melts away into this, like piano track that's kind of like if you know the mob from that same scene you know some anarcho peace punk kind of shit but then the next track is back on the punk train and they got one song that has a little bit of ska reggae shit mixed in these guys are all over the place good record punk rock shit but what would trump that in that same country in that same fucking year is fucking one-way system this goddamn single kills probably one of my favorite UK 82 jams ever stab the judge one-way system stab the judge a fucking killer yeah stab the judge riot torn city me and you this is on fucking uh, light beat records light beat you gotta be careful with this one I ordered this shit one time, and that sucker tried to send me a repress instead of the real deal. And, like, this cover is very similar on the repress, but the labels are different, and the fucking uh, the number should be way one, not something else. You got to check your shit when you get it from Discogs or something, because some fools will just sell you the wrong bullshit. Rip you off. Don't let them do it. The Oppressed, Victims and Work Together. The Oppressed, man, this is another kind of in that UK82 vibe. This is more of on a uh, skinhead fucking oi trip. 
This is 1983 on Oppressed Records, Oppressed Records number one. These guys are fucking cool, though. They're, like, totally anti-racist, anti-fascist, fascist, kick-ass fucking uh, punk rock shit. But that's not all. Look at this. The out. The out? The out. This is the out. This is also on Rabid Records. But not Rabid Records that the Offenders were on. That was a Texas label. This is an English label. This is 1979. Rabid Records did records by Slaughter and the Dogs, the Nosebleeds, 70s punk kind of shit. Um, this one's decent. The A-side is a little too commercial sounding maybe, but the B-side is pretty kick-ass, revved up uh, punkish rock and roll bullshit. That shit's called Linda's Just a Statue by the Out. What about the Out? What, you don't like the Out? What about the fucking Outcasts? Yeah, the Outcasts. Now, the <laughs> oh, man, look at how angry this little fella is. Ah, I've had a bad day. All those guys got leather jackets, and I'm still dressed up from school. It'll be okay, little pup. Don't worry, man. The outcast, self-conscious over you and love you for never. <laughs> the outcasts are like, uh, this is like, uh, what, 79? Yep, 79 on Good Vibrations Records. The legendary Irish label, Good Vibrations. Um, and as well, this is a Northern Ir Irish band. Um, these guys are kind of like, a rougher, meaner, dirtier undertones. This is like straightforward poppy punk rock, but it's just like a lot meaner. The undertones were so nice, and these guys, they were not nice. <laughs> Which I appreciate. Good on you, outcasts. That that early outcast shit is like uh, pretty amateurish, but uh, kind of perfect. And they put out a lot of other shit that uh, they, they were not amateurs forever. They definitely learned their trade. But this is the early one from the first record, and it's good. We're not done with things that start with out. What about the Outsiders? This is not the Psychedelic Outsiders. This is another punk rock single, because that's like my shit. One to Infinity by the Outsiders. This is 1977 Raw Edge Records which I'm pretty sure is their own label that put out two singles by them and two LPs, and that's it, maybe. I don't know if I got that perfectly correct, but it's something like that. This record's really good, man. I like this band a lot. They You don't, you don't hear a lot about them when people are talking about 70s UK punk shit, but they're pretty righteous. kind of has a Saints sound to it, I think, on this single. You know, like... Uh, 70s punk book, definitely with, you know, a, a goddamn rock and roll edge. It's fucking kick ass. The Outsiders, good shit. One more. God damn it. Wrap it up, dude. Okay. Overkill. We already showed Overkill. That was the other Overkill. That was thrash metal, East Coast Overkill. This is fucking punk rock, West Coast Overkill. SST Records, 1982. Ba -ba -ba -bam -bam. This single is fucking killer. On the LP these guys put out, they got a little metal mixed in, but on this single, man, it's it's pretty full on righteous punk rock shit, man. Hell's getting hotter. What's the one about school? They're all angry at their school. Burn the school! Oh yeah, yeah, man. That shit's pretty righteous, pretty gnarly. These guys, uh, you know, it's early SST shit. It's good. Get it. You don't gotta get it. I mean, a lot of people are like, you gotta get this on these things. I ain't never gonna say that to you. What you should do is if something sounds interesting or looks interesting that I talk about, just like, it's very easy now to just plug that fucking thing in to the googs or the fucking ubes, tubes, you know, or wherever you fucking want and be like, oh, that's what it sounds like. Don't waste your money on economy. I like a lot of shit that nobody gives a fuck about. But you know what? A lot of people don't have any goddamn taste.
Would a guy with this shitty mustache lead you wrong? Maybe. So preview that shit first. But damn, I think all those records are good. Otherwise, I would have sold them. Later!